Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs today with another episode about vintage display technology. And today it's about Numitrons and Minitrons. Well, Numitrons and Minitrons are basically incandescent filament displays. So what you see here is in fact filaments just as in your incandescent light bulbs. And these two here are Russian Numitron tubes. Uh, this is the IV8 and this is the IV13. And some people say that here the IV13 is the most beautiful and the biggest Numitron displays. But in fact I find here the smaller ones, the IV8, a little bit more attractive. And what you also can see is that the color of the glow is somewhat yellow-orange and that reminds a little bit of Nixies. And if you uh, Google or put in eBay search for Numitrons, you will not only find Numitrons but also many sellers that in fact sell Nixies and VFD tubes. But this is totally different just as well to Nixie tubes and VFD tubes. First of all, they don't need any high voltage. Uh, they are not real tubes, although um, the technology to build them is certainly the same as with tubes. And they are probably is also a vacuum inside, just as in your incandescent light bulbs. But they are simply working with usually around three to six volts. So for example here this little what is called a variation, a Minitron, this one has a nominal voltage of 4 volts but I've reduced that to 3 volts just to match a little bit the brightness and the color of the different uh, displays and you can see they are extremely robust. That's why they, especially these Minitron tubes which come in a rectangular case and usually are seven segment displays but this one is an alphanumeric Minitron. Um, they were mainly used in aircrafts because of their very good readability even in sunlight which you wouldn't expect. They are much better readable in brightly lit surroundings than Nixie displays and they are basically immu immune to vibration um, because the the filament is not under any mechanical tension. Um, it's hanging loosely uh, at, the, at the binding post where the ends are welded to. So you can use them in environments with extremely heavy vibrations, which is certainly the case for fighter planes or even commercial airplanes. And although usually they are only rated for 10,000 hours, uh, these are always supplied with under voltage. That's why the orange glow comes. You might know that from your incandescent light bulb, if you work them at a lower voltage, uh, the color of the filament uh, becomes more and more yellow orange. And the lifetime extends, for example, for an incandescent light bulb, it's also 10,000 hours. But these will last basically forever if you don't smash the, the glass tube. So this is just a single display that I got from eBay. Um, this clock uh, I built by myself. And by the way, uh, they can be driven directly with uh, TTL outputs, at least if, if it are power outputs. They, each segment only needs a few milliamps, so a t TTL chip with driver outputs uh, can easily be, without any additional resistors, be interfaced to Numitrons. And I think here the IV13, they need something around 6 volts. What I don't like about them is, is this kind of magenta base plate the, where the filaments are mounted on. This looks a bit, little bit ugly. So I find this black background here for the filaments uh, much nicer for a display. So anyway, we'll take a look at some pictures of different Numitrons and Minitrons that were produced over the time. And we take a look at this kit here, which is sold by Jürgen Grau or Mr. Nixie. I think he also sells worldwide. Um, th this one is co concerning the price. Uh, you get these little ones, the IV8, still quite cheap on eBay for a couple of six will cost you around 
between 20 and 30 dollars or euros uh, while these ones here the six tubes cost around 250 euros um, so they're extremely expensive probably the Russian Nixie and Numitron Mafia is again driving the prices up and the kit itself without the tubes costs 200 euros so uh, not on the cheap side but it's really beautifully made with an acrylic case consisting of several layers you have this top kind of plate here this even has a kind of polished steel uh, finish so let us take a, a look at some other Numitrons that were produced over time and by the way um, Numitrons were in the era just between the Nixie era and the LED 7 segment era but they were rarely used in consumer products mainly used for military or commercial aircraft uses or industrial uses and believe it or not uh, this type here from Wamco is still produced today and there was someone even inquired about the price and you can buy them at, believe it or not, $260 per piece in quantities of I think 100 or 1000. Um, so that clearly indicates the military use uh, of these alphanumeric Minitrons. So let's start our tour of the internet about Numitrons and Minitrons here with the industrialalchemy.org page. And they have a lot of uh, different fields of interest in vintage display technology. And let's we'll go to filament displays, Numitrons, Minitrons and pin light displays never heard of that so and here are a few examples uh, one of the major manufacturers of minitrons was, was rca in their apollo series which was apparently also produced by iee which are also one of the major players in applying new display technologies during their time or the, uh, some other Apollos. And here you can see the difference between classical Numitron tubes and Minitrons, which always come in rectangular cases, better suited for applying them directly on a PCB. And here we also see our Wamco types. And Pinlight seems to have been another manufacturer of Minitrons. And this one I find especially beautiful with this flat round tube. But if you search for them on eBay, if you ever find one, they will be quite expensive. And we have another IEE Aurora display, etc. So a lot of different types. And here you already can see the alphanumeric Wamco types. This is nearly the one that you could see just a few minutes ago. And Wamco even produced, just for the decimal point, a single display. Unbelievable, because here what these alphanumeric displays lack is a decimal point. So and this is the KW105AL. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And another brand I never heard of, the Lamps Incorporated Numera or Numera Lamp. And then we have the Vintage Technology Association. Their website is decadecounter.com. I will give you all the links in the uh, video description. And under the incandescent displays here we already find Fuji with a Minitron. And down below again some of the IAE Apollo series, IAE Aurora series and uh, another pin lights, seven segment display. And again the RCA type with this round face here, which I think is perhaps the most beautiful Numitron ever produced. And if you take a closer look at this Wamco alphanumeric type, you can see in this high resolution or high magnification shot, really how the single filaments are welded to their posts. And as far as I know, this was made by hand, because if you take 
a close look at the one that I got. Um, the filaments are not very straight. Some of them are a little bit kinked. So there were probably some women sitting around all day and fiddling here with welding the single filaments to their post. And this type also has a very strange mounting with these tubular pins and a matching socket. But 175 or was it 270 or how much they want to have for such a display. Even the tubular pins do not justify such a high price. And this is the homepage of Wemco today and you can see you still can buy them. They don't give a price on, on their webpage. You have to inquire and somebody did that and he fell over his chair when he got the answer how expensive these types are. But the military or the commercial airlines if they need replacement parts they pay any price that you want. Another page that is dedicated to vintage display to technologies is Dieter Wächter's homepage. He's one of the gurus in the vintage technology, well even in the vintage technology business. And you can see again we have some RCA, RCA and here is the IV16 quite similar to the little one that I use from Reflector Softtech. And if we scroll down, so and from his side you also can download all the data sheets, uh, not only from Nixies, but about nearly everything that came out in vintage displays over the last 50 or 60 years. So here is the IV13. He also claims this is the largest and most beautiful Mumitron tube I know. It's the queen of all Mumitrons. I disagree. It's perhaps the largest, but here you also can see this magenta background or mounting plate. This does not look very pretty. So now let's finally take a closer look at the IV13 Numitron clock with the big tubes uh, from Jürgen Grau. So here we are at the assembly manual for the IV13 uh, Numi Queen kit. Uh, thankfully it's also in English. For all foreigners this thing can be also built by you. The build manual is not for something for beginners, so you should have some experience in building kits, especially regarding the high price of the kit. So this clock has a lot of hardware and software options. Here you can see some dip switches to set, for example, when you connect a radio time code receiver, you can set in which region you are, if, if it's the German radio time signal or the English or the US. So a lot of options, so let's turn this around. This is a look onto the PCB and you can see all high quality ceramic sockets for the tubes. And in the middle of the socket um, you can solder an LED from any color you want, even RGB LEDs. I've used for my clock amber LEDs which match in their color the color of the Numitrons. And there's even a temperature sensor so that it can set the clock also display the ambient temperature. And when we la later take a look at the schematic, uh, each tube is driven by a single, I think it's a constant current driver from TI. Here is a shot of the PCB and let's turn it around again. He even mentions how to properly wiggle the tubes into their sockets because the worst thing that can happen is if you have a bent pin and you apply too much force then the glass metal seal here will break and you can throw your precious tube into the garbage bin. So the most often failure modes of uh, Numitrons, just as well as, as with Nixies, is not that they have an electrical problem, but that you smash the glass case or break the glass metal seal. And he even made some thermal pictures because the tubes become substantially hot, well hot to the, not hot to the touch, but you can feel their warmth. And thereby this influences the temperature sensor which 
for that reason is placed on the other side of the PCB. But even there you have to input a corrective value that is subtracted from the measured temperature. So and here we have the schematic. You even have an option to add some AMPM wheat of grain filament bulbs as kind of annunciators or or as kind of separators between the hours, the minutes and the seconds. I've not yet done that, uh, but I will later add this to my clock. You have a little buzz buzzer. You can, of course, use this also as an alarm clock. And you have different connectors for your radio time code signal. He even sells modules for DCF, which is the German time code station, or GPS, or the English and American radio time code stations. And the driver chip for the Numitron is a TLC5916 power shift register from TI. All other parts are more or less standard parts. The microcontroller is a PIC16F1938. Of course, properly protected, so you won't be able to read out the firmware and uh, copy this chip. And assembling the case, that was really the hardest part. Uh, I needed about two hours to solder the PCB together. But the case took more than an hour uh, because you have to find out by yourself on how to interpret here the diagrams. In the end, they only fit in one way correctly, but this takes some time to find out by yourself. These are the software options for the clock that you can set with the three push buttons. There's even an extra push button for daylight saving time so that you can quickly switch from winter time to summer time as we call it here. And you can set all different modes, 12 or 24 hours, how the date is displayed in the European or the American way. You can set a night mode with either reduced brightness or totally off. And if this is active only during weekdays or the whole week, etc. How the decimal point behaves, so more than 30 options. So the firmware is quite advanced and you can configure the clock just the way you want it. Okay, now let's finally take a look at the live PCB and partly disassemble the case. So here you can see the clock from above with the beautiful brushed metal finish adhesive top layer. And I'll try to partially disassemble this while. I don't know if this still goes over the tubes now that they are, the tubes are seated in their sockets. No, I cannot lift this, so I will have to pull the tubes out of their sockets. The precious $250 set of six. And for this high price you don't get a very even quality, so the Russians were not very good in making their tubes evenly. So of course we don't see more than we saw on the photo. So this is not ultra interesting. We have a little super cap just to let the pick also run for a couple of minutes when you have power off so that it doesn't lose time. And here the little quartz crystal. So it does not have a, a separate watch crystal. That's a little bit sad uh, because with the super cap this thing doesn't run for hours or days. Then here you can insert a special module for time code receiving or use an external one here with a three and a half millimeter plug. A power plug, so a few push buttons and that is all. So not super interesting, but um, the case consists of, I don't know, f I think five layers of different plastic and acrylic. So let's put this thing together again. Oh, 
Okay, let's power this thing up again. And hopefully it has kept the time and all tubes are still in working condition. But you can see here how much the rightmost one is simply out of being rectangular. So this was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kainka Labs.